Where are you going? What? Where are you going? Welcome to Devil's Tower National Monument, the United States' first national monument, designated by Theodore Roosevelt in 1906. This means it's important. It sure does mean something. And no, I'm afraid not aliens. I want to speak to someone in charge. I want a lodge a complaint. Now, geologically inclined might believe that this is columnar basalt, my personal favorite kind of basalt. But you would be a fool to believe this, for it is actually... <sighs> Phonolithic, phonolithic porphyry. Phonolite porphyry. Phonolite porphyry. Phonolithic porphyry. Phonolite porphyry. I don't know which one. One, one of those. those. Phonolithic porphyry. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to keep the stutters in because I think it'll be funny. And the difference will shock. Basalt is an extrusive igneous rock. I have to explain that one too, don't I? God, you guys are so needy! There are three major classifications of rock. Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. So both basalt and phonolite actually fit into the category of igneous rocks, which basically means that it's rock that's formed from cooled magma or lava. And what is meant by extrusive is that basically they didn't cool deep underground, they cooled at the surface or near the surface. And you can tell by the size of the crystals in the rock. When an igneous rock looks generally homogenized, Can you see it? I, I don't know if you can see it as opposed to having large crystals like granite, it means that it cooled relatively quickly, which means that it was near or at the surface when it was cooling. When rocks cool slow, it means that the minerals within them have time to bunch with their like counterparts. But in basalt and phonolite, those minerals did not have time to separate before it fully cooled. But getting back to basalt, it's known for often forming in these very interesting columns. You can see this in Yellowstone National Park and in other places, but that's not what this is. So what's the difference? Well, even though they form similarly, it really comes down to their chemical composition. In particular, the minerals that make them up. Basalt is a true blue mafic rock. That means it's relatively low in feldspar and quartz, but high in magnesium and iron. But phonolite is actually an intermediate between felsic and mafic. Felsic rocks are low in magnesium and iron, but high in feldspar and quartz. But if phonolite is an extrusive rock like basalt, then why are there so many large crystals? Well, actually, both basalt and phonolite, like a lot of other igneous rocks, can form a texture called porphyry. This is a phonolite porphyry, which means that in spite of the fact that a lot of it has been cooled to the point of homogenizing, it actually cooled slow enough that the minerals with the highest melting points were able to crystallize before it finished cooling. What this means is that Devil's Tower wasn't truly an extrusive feature, but rather a near-surface feature. The molten rock that cooled into Devil's Tower was just a little bit underground, allowing enough time for some minerals to fully join, but not enough time for others. So maybe it wasn't actually that shocking. You may have noticed I'm wearing different clothes. I do reshoots sometimes. 